give him all the glory. Somebody lift up your hands and let's bless his name. Only him has a final word. He rules over our heart and rules over the world. Let's go before him now. I told you I'm speaking to God who has a final word. Let's give him all the glory. Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning. The God that has a final word. The God that rules over our heart. We bless your name this morning. I thought somebody is speaking to God. Now lift up your hands and place a demand on this communion table this morning. I've come to eat of your flesh. I've come to drink of your blood. Lord, salvage me from every destruction of life. Give to me all that life demanded of me. If nothing can stop you, this morning nothing can stop me. As I partake of your blood, Lord Jesus, help me this morning. Yes, my Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For all the testimonies who have received this morning, somebody also lift up your hands. Because as you thank God, your own is the next one. I thank you for the testimonies we receive. For great deliverances. Career fortune turns positive. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' most precious name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, in this settlement service, said to us, set to every unsettled areas of our life. Settled every unsettled area of our lives. Let every business frustration be settled. Let career frustration be settled. Marital frustration, Lord, this morning let it be settled. The God of my fathers, the God of this commission, do what only you again can do. Let your children return from this service glorifying your name. Father, do it and we vow to return all glory to you. In Jesus' most precious name, we have prayed. And I believe there are believers in the house. Say louder amen to Jesus. Say bigger amen to Jesus. Well, before you have your seat, I'd like you to turn to the left and to the right and have a warm ship and shake with someone. I'll tell the person I love you by force. Say it again, I love you by force. Say to someone, I love you by doling. Now, if the person is frowning, turn to another person. If the person is frowning, tell somebody I love you by super. Say it again, I love you compulsorily. <laughs> what? If the person is not, is not laughing, I want you to say to someone by your side, look at the person, tell me, look at my eyes. <laughs> I love you by force. Amen. May the love of God never die in your life. May it keep growing. <laughs> Say loud Now put your hands together for Jesus. And joyfully and comfortably have your seat. Amen. Amen. Some who are faster than they are uh, they're supposed to do, they thought I would tell them to stand. God have mercy on you this morning. Again, on the behalf of God's servant, our Father, we shall do the poem. I'd like again to welcome every one of us to this covenant day of settlement where God has vowed to settle you. And you shall be settled. Did you hear me at home? Say me, I shall be settled. Say it again, I shall be settled. The blood of Jesus will set to your desire this morning. If there is any oppression around your life, as 
as you partake of this blood, irresistible power of the blood, I see God settling you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Today is our covenant day of settlement. And our focus for the month of February 2024 is whatever God can do, faith can make happen. Are you with me? So this morning, your faith in the blood will make happen whatever God can do in your life. You believe it? Say louder, amen. amen. Our teaching series also this morning, Sunday, which we have been looking at, is engaging the power of faith for fulfillment of prophecies and this is part 2a engaging the power of faith for fulfillment of prophecy whatever God has said concerning you and I this year will not fall to the ground if only your faith will be in place and I believe your faith is there and so I see you taking delivery of your blessings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Numbers chapter 13 painted a graphic feature, I mean illustration. That in life you are either a figurehead or an arrowhead. Say me I'm an arrowhead. Say, hey, say me I'm an arrowhead. So the picture was painted there very illustrical, I mean graphically. That in life you are either a figurehead or an arrowhead you can't sit on the fence you can't sit on the fence now figurehead is someone who exists only by name he doesn't have anything to contribute that's a figurehead the only thing that know him is by his name nothing else no contribution no impact no nothing that's a figurehead a man who occupy a nominal position, nothing to show, that won't be your portion. Did you hear me at all? That won't be your portion. Now, an arrowhead is a sign or symbol used to indicate a direction. That means you and I, we are moved by the power of God to show what it looks like to others. That's an arrowhead. And that is what this commission represents. An arrowhead that shows what it looks like. An arrowhead that shows example to people. A compass that leads the way. That's an arrowhead. And God is saying to you and I that from today, they will know you only by your name. They will know you by impacts. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Somebody under the, under the sound of my voice, it's possible that even since you were born, you have never been known with any good thing traceable to you. This morning, I'm saying to you, by the blood of Jesus and in the name of Jesus, Reversa is coming to you. Amen. Maybe perhaps when they mention your name, nothing good shows. But we have come to a place where good things happen. You have come to an association where good things always in place. From today, may the environmental anointing of this commission begin to rub upon you. Amen. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. You are not just a biological error. Come on, say, I'm not a biological error. Say it again, I'm not a biological error. I am here to hit the target. You just have to hit the, the target because you are not ahead. You are narrowhead, and that is the functionality of your faith, the power of faith. You can't be an arrowhead sitting on the fence. No, you are making the mark. You can't be an arrowhead sitting on the fence. No, you are hitting the target. You show people what it looks like. That is what God has called you to give to you this morning. Now, let's take our time to look at what the Bible says concerning these two kinds of people. Men of just a figurehead and the one who chooses to be a narrow head. In Numbers chapter 13 and in verse 25 beginning, you are familiar with this scripture. And they returned 
from searching of the land after 40 days. Talking about the ten spies. And in verse 26, and they went and came to Moses. Follow me carefully. And to Aaron. And to the congregation of Israel, or children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran and Kesha and Kadesh, and brought back words unto them, and unto the congregation, and showing them the fruit of the land. It is one thing to show the fruit of the land, it's another thing to possess the land. It's another thing to show the fruit of the land. It's another thing to take over the land. It's not enough to have the fruits. It's enough to have the ground where the fruit is coming out from. Many are contented with the fruits. Many are satisfied with the fruits. But it is not enough in the fruits. You have to have what it looks like. Many years ago, my father was called by his spiritual father. And he said to him, hey, open that bag. Take money as you want. And he said to him, no. I don't want the money. Show me how to make the money. Show me how to make the money. So don't be satisfied with how to get it. Or what is in your hand. Be satisfied with the source. The source. That is where your destiny is. That is where your dignity is. And that, that's, I, I feel for people who about carrying themselves here and there looking for what to eat all times how long will you be looking for what to eat and you have the potentials in you to produce what to keep eating forever I told people many times don't be satisfied being a conductor there is something in you that can buy buses for people to, to drive and so they were showing the fruits and in verse 27 and they told him and said came unto the land without thou sentest us and surely look at a good testimony here it's flowing with milk and honey and it is the I mean this is the fruit of it we have what to show and in verse 28 he said nevertheless I like you to read that scripture with me in verse 28 look at what the Bible said there he said nevertheless the people be strong that dwell in the land and the city are war and every and very great and moreover we saw the children of Anak there come on now they saw what the children of Anak in the journey of life anything is bound to intimidate you anything is bound to turn you back but your disposition, your ability to, to stand is what determines what belongs to you. So in the world where confrontations are there, but what is your faith to take possession? What is your faith? It is not enough to sit back counting blessings. It is all enough when you begin to take possession of what belongs to you. This year, you will not be a nominal person. This year, you will not be a figurehead. This year, God will deliver to you and I whatever that belongs to you and I. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Now, let's read ahead and look at what the Bible said here. In verse 29, that he said, The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountain. And then, and the Canaanite dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. These are all things who discourage people from reaching all the blessings that God has prepared for them. Hear me, let me say this too. Now, your faith will determine your possession this year. Are you with me? Your faith. Because there are enough of things to challenge your life. Wake up in the morning, the first thing, and lock your door. Hey, do you have food to eat? That's a challenge. Wake up in the morning as you have successful food to eat. As you go out there, do you have money to enter the bag that you're coming your way? Do you have money to take you to the next place you are going? These are all challenges that will come your way in the year. But it is your faith that drives you through. 
your faith. So anarchy, all kinds of situations will be confronting your life but build up your faith and see the next verse. That is my emphasis. We are just in one category, I mean one category of people or person. The next verse in verse 30, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, quiet man, let us go up at once. Why? To possess it for we are well able to overcome it. That will be your language this year. I said that will be your language this year. That when the negative comes up, you are able to steal the negative. When people who speak contrary to what you believe comes around your life, you shut them up. Not that you are proud, you are shutting them up by the word of faith. You know something? What you permit is what exists around your life. What you permit. If you join them speaking like others, we see what others are seeing. But if you stop them, you see what other people who are faithful people see. This year, nothing will grind your faith. You believe it? Let me hear you loud and say, man. I said, nothing will grind your faith. And Caleb still the people. Hear me, sir. There are people that you must shut up this year. The people who speak negative. People who doesn't believe what you believe. People who doesn't have faith that you have. You know, you need to also know the kind of association you keep this year. If you find yourself among the people who speak on, I mean, things that will dampen your faith, you are gone. Fortune 2024, my fearful favor year. They say which favor? They say which favor? So, these are people to run away from. These are people to be careful of. Because until you steal them, they will steal your joy. Until you steal them, they will steal your breakthrough. So it is time to go out there and tell the devil I've come to take over. You know, many years ago, God's servant came to Kaduna here. And then, by virtue of some few ministers that existed here before he came, they asked him of his mission. He said, we came to take over. We, came, we have come to take over. Have we not take over, taken over already? We have come to take over. So what your mouth says is what your eye sees. If your mouth can say it, forget it. If it is too big for your mouth to pronounce it, it will be too small for your hand to handle it. So get ready because the year is full of fortune. The year is full of power. Only those who say it will see it. Are you with me? This year, whatever God has said concerning you, whatever you can see now, and you can see now, believe in it, it shall be fully delivered to you. Can you see your breakthrough? Can you see your fortune? Can you see your fruitfulness? Can you see your blessings? Can you see your promotion? Can you see yourself advancing? Lift up your right hands and prophesy it. Prophesy it to your life. Prophesy it to your life. I'm not going back. I'm not going down. I'm going forward. I'm not going back. I'm not going down. I'm going forward. I'm not going back. I'm not going down. I'm going forward. You shall go forward forever. You shall go forward forever. You shall go forward forever. Now, the question this morning, what really makes Caleb an arrowhead? And the answer came in the next chapter. What really made Caleb an arrowhead? Now, in Numbers chapter 14 and in verse 24, look at what the Bible says. This was God testifying about Caleb. He said, but my servant Caleb, not because he's mighty, not because he's tall, not because he's fat or short, but because he had another spirit in, I mean, with him. He had another spirit with him. And has followed me fully. Only those with this spirit can follow. He said, In him will I bring into the land whereunto he went. And his seed 
it shall possess him. So until you say it, you can't taste it. In him will I bring unto the land. Because God has said it, he saw it. He said it, he saw it. He had another spirit in him. What is this spirit? That is the spirit of faith. That never turned back at anything. That never turned back at failure. He only drive to the end. First Corinthians chapter 4. I mean, Second Corinthians chapter 4. And in verse 13. Look at the Bible here. The spirit of faith. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and in verse 13. For, I mean, have, we have been the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. And we also believe, and therefore we speak. You can't shut faith up. Faith speaks. Speaks to take. Speaks to take. You, you, you don't, don't tell me you believe until you begin to say it. Don't tell me you believe until you begin to say it. And until you begin to say it, you can see it. We have the same spirit of faith. And so it has moved us to speak. And we also, we saw that you, you believe. We believe also. And it has also empowered us to speak. So faith speaks. Faith don't keep quiet. That is why when you are speaking as a faith man, when you are speaking as a faith woman, people seem to see you as a proud person. But you are not speaking according to the environment. You are speaking by what you are seeing that they cannot see. You are speaking by what you can feel that they cannot feel. I keep hearing God, I've been hearing God say, He said, I see people you cannot see. I can see people that overflow everywhere. And today the overflow is everywhere, including you and I here. He was saying it only in Banawa then. Today, can you count the number of churches of living faith in everywhere here? All by what he saw. All by what he saw. So when faith is speaking, it can be mistaken for pride. But those who understand the language of faith, we always understand where we are coming from. He stood one day and he said, I can never be poor. They said, what a proud man. But today, he said, with a snap of finger, I can buy an aircraft. A snap of finger. He wasn't there before, but he was saying it. Faith is a speaking force. Faith is a speaking force. Please hear me, sir. Faith has an influence like an alcohol. Permit me to say that faith is a spiritual alcohol for those who take it. Are you with me? Just like a natural man takes an alcohol and begins to misbehave. That is what it looks like to the spiritual people who are baptized with the spirit of faith. Anytime you are embedded and endued with the spirit of faith, you speak like an, a man that has taken an alcohol. When you are under the influence of faith, you don't speak and talk normal. You speak abnormal, but yet it's normal. You speak abnormal, but yet it is normal. Because you are under an influence. A man who is under an influence can see a lion and say, come and play with me. He's under an influence. Huh? Sir. David was under an influence. He wasn't only playing with the lion. I have always believed this. So have you read in your scripture that lion is an animal that never turned back on any, I mean, on any animal? In fact, he's called as the, jung, I mean, the king of the jungle. But one day he saw a man who was under an influence of faith for the first time, sir. Lion ran and a man was chasing lion. David was chasing lion. Lion was running. Lion has never turned. But he saw another man who is under heavy influence than he is. So lion took off for the first time. I prophesy for someone here. No situation will turn you down this year. As you come under this faith influence. Every 
everything will turn in your favor. Everything will turn in your favor. Everything will turn in your favor. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. That was the influence that Caleb was under it. That he sealed the people. That was the same influence that is pushing Oedeko here and there. Influence of faith. If you see Bishop Oedeko, is faith personified. Faith I mean oriented. He got to a robot university, he looked at the environment, he likes the place. He said this thing can happen anywhere. And the same thing is happening in Canaan today. Why? Because faith reproduces. Faith sees to reproduce. Faith sees to carry. Anytime your faith is in place, you are permitted to take whatever you want to carry. Jesus said, if you have faith, you can say to this mountain, be thou cast into the sea. And so that means faith can move mountain. And if faith can move mountain, then faith can move any building from anywhere of your choice to where you want it to be. That was the same thing. Or a robot university was moved from where it is to Canaan land. By faith, it can happen anywhere. Friends, don't limit yourself. Just build up your faith. Don't limit yourself. Just build up your faith. Just build up your faith. Most especially when you will hear the word of prophecy. When it is communicated to you through prophecy, just allow that faith to drive you. Now look at this. A young brother in our church here, Kenalan, a Covenant University student graduate who went out to serve in a place. They've read that testimony for us several times and saw the things that was happening there. This wasn't working the way it should work. And he went to his boss and he said, there is a way we do it. If you allow me, I'll take you through. And so the young man introduced prayer that is covenant kingdom mindedness. Introduced prayer in the morning and the need to pray, do devotion before resuming work. And the company that was actually going down just suddenly picked up and things began to work. And things began to work. Now when his service year was over, and he was to go. The master called him. That you have helped us. And now you are due for a reward. May somebody be rewarded here. Amen. What was the reward? He said to him. He gave to him an estate. And a Range Rover, bus, I mean Range Rover spot. For a reward sir. Because somebody came to influence them. Under an influence of heaven. Sir if you don't mind the kingdom. The kingdom will not mind your life. So get ready. The year is loaded. It is what you do for the kingdom that determines what the kingdom does to your life. Glory to God. I know someone here this year, your story is changing in the positive. Your story is changing in the positive. For someone, somebody just go for service here nine months and then you are riding and running because they posted it to somewhere. You need to stay and ask God. Take advantage of where God is you to no asking for redeployment just going for nine months service and then own an estate and the rain zero sports wow it's what doing it's what doing may your life change in a positive come on may your life change in a positive so take advantage because prayer prophecies are pregnant with issues to deliver to you and I it is what we do with prophecy that determine the outcome of prophecy in our lives. You sleep with prophecy, it remains, I mean, sleep in your life. You actively engage prophecy, it produces matrimony. So that's why every prophecy according to scriptures, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, we need to war a good warfare. And then after he's a church, is a church. He said, This church I command unto you, son Timothy, that the according to the prophets that are gone ahead of you, that thou mightest by them war. So it's a church. You are charged to take over. You are charged to go headlong. To see what God has in stock for you. 
This year you won't miss it. I said this year you will not miss it. I said this year you will not miss it. You believe it, let your amen show you. Now, quickly, how powerful are scripture? I mean prophecies. How powerful are prophecies? Number one, prophecies carry inbuilt cap, inbuilt power for fulfillment. Inbuilt power for fulfillment. That means God is not considering your size for him to speak. He's considering what is inside of him to speak because only him can get it done. Only God. So there is no amount of prayer. You are praying for me now. Pastor John, I know you are loaded. You have the power. Build this auditorium. You are wasting my time. I can't build it now. Because I don't have that power. But if God said he's going to build this auditorium, you can imagine that. How many days? He created the whole universe in six days. So to build the house is not an easy, and it's not, it's not a tax on him. So he, he has an inbuilt capacity to deliver. And I see God, whatever I say concerning you this year, will smoothly come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 1 and verse 34 beginning. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be? He can't explain it. She has no technical how. How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. How can a virgin have a child? But not when prophecies went ahead. And in verse 35, and the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall over, I mean, come upon thee, and the power of the, high, of the highest shall overshadow thee. That is what makes the job done. We call it spiritual medicine. He has the power to get the job done. The power of the highest. When he overshadows a man, there is no impossibility tax. May that power overshadow you today. Yeah. Therefore, also, that the holy thing which thou shalt born, shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. That is the power of prophecy. Did it happen or not? Jesus came as prophesied. So every time prophecies go ahead of you and I, what we need to do is just to believe no matter how simple it looks like. Many times people don't believe prophecies. That sounds very simple. They believe the one that they will hold their head and turn your head upside down and uh, shake your, your nash, shake your body, shake your body, shake everywhere and give you one candle and tell you to go and pray in the night and carry you to one mountain where they will spoil your life. But the one that speak to you through the word of God, he said, no. You know something? There is no prophecy that will work in your life if you refuse to fight with it. There is no prophecy that will work in your life if you refuse to drive it. A testimony was read to us this morning. I mean, was given to us here. He said, after ARP said, I went ahead and I keep repeating that word on my, I mean, to myself. That is how prophecies work. If you are sitting all oh, prophecy, we just come and fulfill my life. Never. Every prophecy that ever come to pass, somebody need to war with it. Need to, there is no lazy, I mean, food for a lazy man in the kingdom. If it must come to pass, then fight with it. Because there are many contenders that will not allow you to see the realities of your life. But you need to hear what God has said. And then go back to the drawing board. Jesus, you have said it. It has to come to pass. And by so doing that, you are telling the enemies, take up your rough, off, rough hand of my life, cutting up the rough edges for the prophecies to come to pass. Well, the good news for you and I this morning, whatever God has said concerning you, will definitely come to pass. In the name of Jesus Christ. How powerful are prophecies? God speaks according to his capacity. Not our limitations. He speaks according to his capacity. Not according to our limitations. You can imagine Covenant University being built seven months. Nobody does that. Only God can do it. Faith Tabernacle built in one year. Only God can do it. Why? Because when prophecy comforts, and then somebody believes it and drives it. As you are driving it, you are creating platform for it to come to pass. 
That is why the two different kind of people in church, when prophecies are being spoken, is the one who drives it, who sees it come to pass, and the one who stays and watches it fall to the ground. Prophecies concerning your life this year will not fall to the ground. I say it will not fall to the ground. You believe it, let your amen show you. Isaiah chapter 43 and in verse 13. Yeah. Before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will walk and it shall let it. I will walk and who shall let it? That's what it means. I will walk and who shall change it? When God wants to walk according to his capacity, who can change it? Even when you are saying no, it won't work. It's just working. Because there's somebody walking it, you don't have the power to stop him. That is why so many of you, when you start your building, so many people mock you. You say you won't finish it. Oh, you won't, you won't do it. Hey, he has, he has no capacity. But as they are mocking you, the one who is backing you is doing it. And then they are mocking you, the one who is backing you is building it. Until it is finished. Even some of them, oh, when you get some breakthrough, they say you won't get another one again. As they are praying, you won't get another one. You get another one again. You still get another one. When they are spending naira, spending naira you are spending dollars. Oh. Because of the backer. Who has the power to walk and who can let it? From today, when God takes over your assignment, no devil will stop you again. When God takes over your assignment, no devil can stop you again. You believe it, let me hear your loudest amen. amen. You believe it, let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Quickly, how does faith facilitate fulfillment of prophecy? This is very important. How does faith facilitate the fulfillment of prophecy? Number one, it takes a hand of God to deliver any prophetic agenda. And you can't move God by your natural empathy. You can't move God by emotions. The only thing that moves God is faith. So, if the hand of God must be brought to bear, then faith must be at work. You know, humanly speaking, every man has a project is running at all times. Every man has a project is running at all times. Except you didn't value life. It's either you are looking for admission to go to school and as you are finishing one school, another thing is calling on you. As you are finishing that one, another thing is calling on you. One thing or the other is calling on you. So at all times, you need this hand of God to pull you through the journey of life. So faith is the only thing that can bring God to bear. He prophecies must be fulfilled in our lives. First King chapter 8 and verse 15. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which spake with his mouth unto David my father, and had with his hand fulfilled it. The mouth of God we said, his hand will bring it to pass. It is one thing to say that we give you a husband, and only he can bring the right person. It's not just getting married. That is why I don't involve myself in matchmaking people. You bring somebody from somewhere, bring another one from somewhere, he said, This is my son, he's a good person. And he's not good. The only thing you know about him is what you are seeing. And then this is my daughter. Oh, wonderful. Wife material is a lie. The only thing you are seeing is what you are seeing. So don't match made people. Only God can give you a right wife. Only God can give you a right husband. Only God can give you the right job. Only God can give you the right pay. Ah. Before you are deceived, eh, somebody carry one, one innocent girl who has her husband somewhere. And then somebody carry somebody's picture who he lean at somebody's vehicle who is, even the vehicle is not his own. And then they bring Brought the, back, the, the picture to you. You like my son? <laughs> he, he's a very good husband. And this man is a boxer. He can box you to death. And then you have married by picture, not by God's plan. So please, I'd like you to understand that when God speaks, 
his hand brings it to pass. So wait on God. Wait on God. Come on, sir. Wait on God. That cut across is every area of our lives, not only in marriage. Not only in marriage. Anything you want to do, please don't allow people to be involved more than God. Praise the Lord. How does faith fulfill, I mean, facilitate fulfillment of prophecy? Giving ourselves wholly to the demand of prophecy is the only proof that we believe in them. Giving ourselves completely, completely to the demands of prophecy. I won't forget this young man, Matthew Ojo Gold, a 19 year old boy who heard Papa say, Boy, if this thing doesn't work in your hand, you are failed. They say he left the service literally crying. I don't want to be a failure. And then went into his house, into their house, where there was nothing good. A one apartment building. And then began to engage. And grew the share to a certain number. And God came, son, you did it. Don't worry, I'm rewarding you. This young man is outside the country today. When you believe God wholly on any issue, it will show your life. The reason why many times it looks as if God is farther than we do, no, is because what he has said has been trashed on that carpet. Nobody believe him for, for who he is. They only believe him for what he is to give to you. So it's time for you and I to believe God wholeheartedly so as to see the reality of what is inside the benefit of what God has in store for us I see God changing your story come on you believe it let me hear your loudest amen in 1st Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15 he said meditate upon these things give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all so until we give ourselves wholly there is no profiting that we show so when we believe and wrong is it then the prophet begin to show. This year, the prophets of Fortune 2024 will not only show in your life, it will be an identity in your destiny. Amen. That daughter of Zion came this morning and said, Lord, I make a commitment that allow people to see me through you this year. That's an identity. Allow people to see me through you this year. That's a commitment. That's a belief. And then, it began to show. So until we give ourselves to everything that is said concerning you and I, the profiting will never show. The profiting will never show. Don't be a bench warmer this year. Be an active Christian by giving yourself wholly to what God has said. And it will show at the end. I say it will show at the end. I say it will show at the end. You believe it? Say it louder. Amen. What more will I say this morning? I pray that God of heaven will give you and I an understanding in the precious name of Jesus Christ. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Come on, you believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. Well, praying for the needs of others to be met, commit God to meeting our needs. And that is Christianity. This me, myself, and I won't help us. The time has come that we need to shift focus. Change the narrative. Take somebody as a project and God will take you as a project. Take somebody's issue as a project and God will take your life as a project. And as God begins to build your life, you become an amazement to your world. But he never serves him until unless you begin to step in for others. That is the reason for major covenant, I mean, care service on the squad, I mean, squad this year. So everybody must take a demand and take what it looks like. Care for others. Care for the needs of others. And watch what God will be doing in your life. I see God changing your story in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 8, 6 and in verse 8. Knowing that whatsoever good thing that any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bound or free. The 
same. The joy here is that the same will he receive of the Lord. If he's a man, uh -huh, you cannot be doubtful that I don't want to do it, the man can dribble me. Because man is always, I mean, uh, the invariable person. I mean, the invariable. So if it is man, man can dribble you. But when it is God, it is sure. So do it, and then you receive of the Lord. Do it. It may be difficult. Too many things will be going upside down. But do it. We had the message on Friday that every this is the season and the most time where your faith and my faith can be tried. Because the time will come that maybe what you have is the only thing you have. But God wants you to give it out. It's a trial of faith. It's a trial of faith. Maybe the money in your pocket is the last one in your pocket. And God will want you to give it out. But God just wants to try your faith so that you can receive abundance from God. Amen. May you pass this test this season. May you pass this test this season. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. Now, for example, I mean, kingdom advancement, as the case may be, it engender healings, health, and wholesomeness. You see somebody who have health challenge, pray for his healing. And then you can't be praying for somebody's healing and then you are, you are, you are, you are going through sickness. Because you can't push the cats, as we told on Saturday, and then you stay behind. No, anytime the cat is going forward, you are going forward alongside. That is the principles of heaven. Do it this year, and God of heaven will bless you in return. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It confers honor. It confers honor. No thing can dishonor a man that God has honor. People may not like it. They may wag their nose. They may resist it. But if it is from God, no matter the resistance, it will come to play. That is why many who have told you over my dead body, will you see this thing this year? Is a concluded issue. They will surely die for you. Did you hear me at all? Anyone who say over my dead body, you see the year is only then. Somebody need to be sensitive to catch it. Anybody who say over my dead body, just say the person, let it be so. Because he will die. He will die. For you to see, he will die. Glory to God. I see God helping you and I. Covenant day or settlement. How will it take? Or what does it take for God to settle you and I? Enter into a covenant to serve God. With an oath. With one's heart. And then the whole of, your, of his desire. Or your desire. Is secured all around life. Anybody may not wish to do it, but you wish to do it. You just enter into the covenant of serving the Lord and see how God will change your story. You remember Second Chronicles chapter 15? Israel without a king, a true king, and a priest, and then vexation was upon the land, if you read beginning from verse 3 or to 7, and then trouble here and there. And the Bible said, they in their trouble turn to the Lord. Because you can't be facing trouble and not turn to God. You'll be looking for help. Only fools face trouble and choose to go ahead. Genuine people, as soon as you see this is trouble, you look for solution. And so in their own trouble, they turn to God. And as a result, enter into a covenant. Seeking the face of God. And in verse 15, the Bible said, and the Lord gave them rest. Round about. Friends, you need rest this year. Serve God. And that includes marital rest. That includes financial rest. That includes business rest. That includes career rest. Academic rest. Marital fortune rest. See, you see, we just get busy seeking what is not seeking for us. Look for what is looking for you. And then every other thing will begin to turn at your attention. So seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. This year is your restful year. Did you hear me at all? It's your peaceful year. It's your year of rest. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. If we will serve God according to the lineup of the so few things I want to give to you. If it's not just serving God 
serving God as I'm about giving to you. Because it is one thing to be in a place doing the right thing at the wrong time. By your actions and dispositions. Some are serving, but they've not seen the thief. They've not seen the blessings. Perhaps you are not serving well. And that's the only thing that can hold your blessings. Perhaps you are not serving well. Some are serving. Every time they are there, energy being invested. Nothing to show. You can't be walking like an elephant. And then nothing to show that you are walking. So if we can serve God, number one, willingly. Come on, say willingly. Say it again, willingly. Willingly. Please permit me, let me say this to you. Anytime you see yourself serving and you are murmuring, quit. Because you are just wasting your time. You are serving and you are murmuring. Anything anybody tells you gets you angry. Please leave that place. It won't benefit you. No excitement. You are just being coerced serving your father. Leave the place. It won't pay you nothing a dime. I see people who serve. Even when you came close to them or come close to them, little contribution like this, they just get angry. If you know you will do it, why didn't you come to do it? You just need nothing. Oh, thank you for giving me this understanding. That's what the wise man should say. And then you apply the same thing. It's like you are writing exam failing. And someone said this is the answer. He said never. He said never. So serve God willingly. Willingly. The year is still very young. Serve God willingly on your duty post. Anything you are doing that is not from your heart. I beg you as your privileged pastor. Anybody who likes you as a, someone who is serving God will tell you this. Leave that place. It won't pay you. Have you seen a man who dressed in school uniform and never go to school? Huh? And even as I'm talking to another people in the university, they're in the campus. They know the break time or the lecture time. Some friends, but they are never in the lecture hall. The day of graduation, he remains there and makes another friends. Perhaps collecting school fees. So that is what you are doing anytime you are serving God. And it's not from your heart. You are collecting school fees from your father, school fees of bread, school fees of free sleep, and yet you are complaining. First Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 16 beginning. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For a I mean, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me. If I preach not the gospel, is a cause he placed upon himself. Verse 17. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. It is only rewardable when it is done willingly. Only rewardable. When it is done willingly. Number two, when we serve God righteously, 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 righteously. You and I will agree with me. We have heard quite a number of testimonies in this church and never before now. But one testimony you will never hear and we never come across any altar if the person is sensible enough. Is the fact that somebody can come to the altar and say, Praise the Lord. And they say, Praise the Lord. He said, Praise the Lord again. And then he said, This house we have seen there. I thank God for this house that I'm living on there. Is my daughter who is a prostitute that built it for me. Because it is not righteous enough. It is not righteous enough. So if your service is here, will be accepted by God. Serve God righteously. Righteously. Let your year be here. Let your name be there. There is no perfect person, but don't remain a wrong person forever. Don't remain a wrong person forever. Once I was born, now I can see. Now, when I was a child, I behaved like a child. Now I'm old. I've made the way with childish things. This is time to get back to God. Righteously. Righteously. Well, 
time will permit us to go through all of that because of communion and all that things we have. Matthew chapter 7, chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. And then number 3, serve God faithfully. 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 Not faithfully. Faithfully. Not faithfully. You are carrying what you can't carry when pastor is watching you. That's uselessness. You sweep and whisper when people are there. And your right is not there. Your heart is not there. Your heart is not there. So it is time to serve God. Faithfully. Faithfully. Not doing, you know, faithfulness simply means doing it at the expense of when nobody's watching you. That is faithfulness. But somebody's watching. The man who sees in secret is the one that will reward in the open. There are people who behave like students who goes to read in the night. Who carry books, heavy load of books, and they can't read one. They just go there, huh? and then straight on the bench, and sleep till daybreak, instead of reading till daybreak. That's how some people normally do. They say, evangelist, time. say, give me hand base. They give you some, you look at it, he say, give me more, give me more. And you can't share one. You can't share one. And then you go back to the houses, you see volumes upon volumes, different titles and colors of hand base. Change it this year. That is not faithfulness. That is eye service. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 2. Moreover, it is required of a steward. What happened? That a man, a man, not men. A man, everybody have what to respond to at the last day. A man be found what? Faithful. Faithful. So serve God faithfully. And then serve God. If we serve God acceptably. 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 God is a God of action. And he wastes action. You say anytime you get to God... And then you are doing it acceptably from, you know, it is when it is from the heart that is accepted. When is anything ordered from the heart, it's down to your offering, down to anything you do. If it is not from your heart, you see, one major issue God has, God does not have issue with people, he has issue with the heart of people. The way you look, if you like, let your note be somewhere, let your face look somehow, that's how he created you. But the heart is the same. In makeup, but what goes on in the heart is what God is after. What goes on in the heart? Everybody's face differs, but the heart in making up everything is the same. What goes on in the heart is what differs. So that is where the major problem of God lies, if there is any. There are some. <laughs> oh my God! Choir was singing. They were singing one song some few minutes ago. And I stood there and I said there are people who are saying and they are standing very tall. Are you actually kneeling down? Are you actually on your knee? You see, when you sing song or you are acting, sing it from your heart. That is when it is acceptable. There are people who when they see you like this, they, they lie down flat. But inside their heart, they are standing very tall. In fact, they are looking at your eyes. It's not accepted. There are, you know something? There is different between, oh Lord, I am sorry. Oh Lord, I'm sorry. Do you know the difference? Who, which, which one can be accepted? The one with passion. Oh Lord. I am sorry. Oh Lord, I'm sorry. As soon as you come before the Lord, oh Lord, I'm sorry. I did wrong. I'm sorry. Sir, no matter the accusation, you have been forgiven. But oh Lord, I'm sorry. Uh, they will knock your head. So there are things that is accepted 
and there are things that is not accepted even by God and human beings I'm sorry now that's not apology oh sorry I know I did wrong I'm sorry I'm sorry please I'm sorry that's an apology it's just like you're bringing gift to somebody <laughs> and then you just drop it anyhow I used to talk to women who serve their husbands food there's a difference between coming to serve your husband and then you bring the food well prepared covered warm the way it ought to be warm and you drop it on the dining and then you call him to come and eat there's a difference between that's your food I'm trying to show you something which one we accepted sir if you drop food for me like this you meet your food like that I won't eat it I won't eat it and you know something hungry does not kill people only food thinks so that if I don't eat now like Esau if I don't eat now with that with that it's only Esau that thinks so real people know that it doesn't kill it only suffer your body it won't kill you so please serve God acceptably this year reverence God reverence God in your behavior reverence God in your service you are giving offering, honor him, not just throwing it anyhow. That is reverencing him to be accepted. And I think that is why many times you see holy, I mean, the Catholic people, they are moving like this, even though some of them are very rough. <laughs> God still what they had. He still what they had. It's our acceptance to what he told us to do that makes him to accept us. Not the clothes you wear. Not the way that you look. Accept what he has you to do and do it reverencingly or whatever the case may be. And then you are qualified to be reverenced by God in honor. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 12 and number 28. Wherefore we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace. Is a grace, sir. Is grace, sir. Whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear reverence and godly fear that is how to serve God serving him when nobody was there and then you are reverencing him when only you is there when only him is the one watching you how do you handle the affairs of God Praise the Lord. He will set to us gloriously in all area of life this year. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. He will set to you and I gloriously in all areas of life this year. If the following can be adhered to and followed. And followed. May God give you the grace. May God give you the understanding. May God give you what it looks like. To serve this God with reverence this year. Come on, you believe him? Let me hear your loudest amen. You believe him? Let me hear your loudest amen. You will not complain in your duty post this year. You will not murmur where they post you to this year. As you serve God, may God give you grace to serve them all. And for those of us who are only bench warmer, receive grace to receive, you need to serve this year. Receive grace to be a committed follower of God this year. Hear this. If it does not cost you anything, it will not add anything to your life. I commend you unto God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give to your inheritance among all them that are sanctified. Rise your feet with me. <laughs> Lift up your hands. Lord, grace will serve you with holy reverence. Grace will serve you with holy reverence. Come on, go before the Lord. Go before the Lord. Go before the Lord. Grace Jesus. I don't want to be a figurehead in serving you this year. I must remain the arrowhead that I am. I must remain the arrowhead that I am. Lord, lift up your hands and speak to God. I must remain the arrowhead that I am. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Quickly want to partake of the communion, but first of all, if you are not born again, what a privilege. What a privilege. We are not eating unto damnation, 
but we you know to life eternal. You are here, you are not born again, or you were born again. Challenges came, you went back. But you want to reconcile with Jesus. The year is fresh. We're just in the second month. We want to reconcile to begin the year. I don't want to suffer the way I suffered last year. I don't want to end the year the way I ended last year. I don't want to end the year in pains the way I ended last year. Lord Jesus, help me. I reconcile with you. I give my life to you. You are the one I'm talking to. Wherever you are this morning, if you are in these two categories of people, give me the privilege before we partake of the communion. Lift up your hands. I want to pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. Choir, you are there. Sing for us. Uh -huh.